So, um, Mike, you want to yeah, sure. get moving along? Right. Um, okay, so I'm writing a textbook because I'm glutton for punishment. And um, it's called Making Fair Comparisons. And it's a textbook that is uh, um, designed for my own students in uh, an IQL class, also for Becca Hickam's students in her IQL class. And really for anybody else that wants to use it, the basic idea of it is an IQL course that is structured, and for those of you who don't know what IQL is, it's a course on quantitative literacy and how we think about numbers and numerical argument. And the idea is uh, that the course is structured almost entirely around this idea of what is a fair comparison? How do we make fair comparisons? The basic principle of the course um, is that a, in a fair comparison you try to compare like to like, you know, thing one. And where there are differences, you try to account for those differences. And if you actually look at most of what we do uh, in uh, mathematics and statistics, most of everything from standard deviation to uh, you know um, uh, statistical significance to um, um, you know uh, to uh, standardizing values uh, to uh, uh, z scores. I mean, all these concepts really come out of really those that idea, right? We, we want to compare when we compare things. We want to compare like to like, and we want to account for differences. Okay, that's the background on the course. The idea is to get a textbook that is generally um, usable by uh, the students in our course, by anybody else that wants to use it. And one of the aspects that's really important to me is I'm a big supporter of open education, so this idea that I'm not just building a textbook for my students, but I want to put this up for free for any other instructor that wants to take a piece of it, maybe stitch together some of my stuff with some of their stuff, um, you know, remix it, re-edit it, uh, reformat it, pull just some exercises out of it. I want, I want it to be an actual editable resource for instructors. So the, the, so the, the approach I, I've taken to the EPUB element of it um, is that I haven't really, um, I've chosen a methodology that preserves that flexibility of, of future people to come in, edit this, and uh, try to make it into a new material at the cost of maybe having uh, tighter control over format. And the way that, um, the way that I'm doing it is I'm, I'm actually writing the whole thing in a Word document. You can see the Word document here. Um, and it has things like, it has things like, um, It has things like uh, you know life expectancy graphs and things like that, um, and um, tables, so forth. Um, you know stuff like this, which tends to tends to be a bit of a format nightmare. Um, so I'm just doing it in Word, and then um, exporting that to uh, uh, then I'm sorry, second second step. I bring it into uh, here, and um, I actually don't have my settings set up. <laughs> Uh, in this particular uh, thing, but um, at home uh, I have some settings that are set up for what we can expect one of these readers to be able to do in terms of the uh, in terms of the format. And if you go here and you just go to size, set your paper size at whatever that is. And again, I forgive me for uh, forgetting this, but somewhere around that, right? Okay. Uh, I think that page looks a little long too, but. Um, and then we save as um, save as PDF. Okay. And so one, you know, point one, you now have a PDF. People want to read a PDF. But then the next step, so that we can get it on something like this, where the text PDFs are are a fixed PDFs. PDFs have don't have what we call flow, right? So. With a PDF, the problem with distributing a PDF on a device like this is if the device is smaller, like it's a mobile phone or it's a Nook or something like that, um, it will make all the text smaller. It won't decide, okay, we're going to wrap this line at, at, at and instead because the margins are smaller. PDFs will just, P 
PDFs are like pictures of documents. That's what they really are, right? And so a PDF is fine for something like an iPad or, or something like that, and it might actually be the best distribution format for a textbook uh, for the iPad because you have a bunch of note-taking capabilities already built in, collaboration abilities already built into PDFs on an iPad. Um, I should check that. I, I know that's true of the Android devices, but I'm assuming it's true of the, 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 the iPad as well. So it might be a good, decent, but it's not necessarily a great format for these because, again, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't flow. It has no idea of how, how broad this is. It's not going to reformat the text for it. So the, the, the last step, if you want to get to an EPUB or a Mobi or any of these things, is, and I'll show you how easy this is, is you take your PDF. I use this tool here called Calibre, um, which is free, absolutely free. Um, and we take that PDF that we've already shrunk to what we anticipate um, the, uh, the margins to be. Part of, do, part of what we're doing when we do that is we see what sorts of formatting errors we're hitting when we shrink that. One of the things that we'll notice if I uh, go down here in the shrunken version is that some of the um, some of the graphics that I have are, are going to not wrap the way I expect. So part of, part of this conversion process is sort of obsessively going and seeing if it converted the way you thought it would convert. This, for example, here converted fairly well, this list checklist of making uh, things. I'm going to guess that this down here uh, yeah, You're converting before you put it into the PDF. I'm uh, yeah. This right here is not so great, right? So it's definitely something where you have sort of an iterative tweaking, you know, on this. To get it into uh, a flow format like EPUB for these devices, um, you find your PDF in here. Um, this is Calibre. You uh, hit convert. And one of the neat things about this is you can go to whatever you want. So. EPUB is a standard that's used on um, used on Nooks, used on um, uh, the, the Libre devices, used on used on about everything but a Kindle. Um, Lit is an old format for Microsoft readers and old mobile phones. Mobi or Mobi is a format that's used on Kindles, right? Um, so you can output to all of these all of these at once. But you choose what you want. In this case, we're going to do EPUB. And uh, we, so we just hit OK. We convert that out. It actually already converted it because I had just done this before. And then we can see, um, and then we can see, where am I? Yeah. And then we can see what this will look like. This gives us a viewer that, that approximates what, how this will look on a device like a Nook or something reading EPUB. And you'll see that um, what's happening in this case, um, some of the formatting is lost, but that in general is still a fairly uh, still a fairly readable text. Um, a lot of that indentation, that sort of multiple indentation we like to do in the bigger documents, the EPUB is just throwing that out because it, it's it's not going to work in EPUB, right? So we don't we don't get the the heavy indentation. Um, but yeah, that's that's all there is to it. So it's a really simple form. It doesn't make the prettiest document, but if you're looking for uh, if you're looking for a model that allows you the flexibility to have a source document that you can edit with other people, that you can share around, that you can break into different pieces, it's a good it's a good way to do it. Um, it's not it's not the ideal uh, format for something that is, uh, for example, if you're looking for something that's visually stunning, you might you might uh, you might look at a different a different process. Yeah. How do you distribute it then? Oh, uh, distribute. You can just put it up on a on a website. Um, the um, the way it works is uh, if you have a Nook, obviously you can you can email this or uh, put it up on a website. Someone can download it. Put put it in the My Documents section of your Nook, and you can read it that way. Um, on the Kindle, um, on the Kindle, you can actually. Um, Kindle will try to do its own formatting if you mail Kindle the formatted scaled down PDF, but you oh, you always want to set those margins to Kindle margins before you send it to Kindle because Kindle will make some weird decisions. 
Um, but there's an email address that you can email, uh, that your Kindle email address, and it will convert that and then dump that to your device. If you want, you can also use the, Mo the Mobi here, and then uh, you can, um, you can uh, add it to your Kindle essentially the same way. I'm not sure what the term is on Kindle, but it's, it's, a, it's a My Documents sort of thing on Kindle as, Kindle as well. So you just, you just distribute it like a regular, like a regular, uh, a regular file. I imagine you could also put it up in a store or something like that. Not really You're not looking to make money off of it? Yeah, I think a store, a store would be neat if you could do like a zero dollar thing, because it's just, sometimes it's just easier for people to go to a store and have it installed on the device. Like iTunes or... Yeah, yeah. So I, but I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't, I'm not, I have a whole book I got to write, so... <laughs> so is there, is there uh, <coughs> interchange between these different formats? Mm -hmm. um, do you have to have the, a specific reader for it? For the... EPUB, EPUB serves a wide array of devices. So if you do an EPUB, you can read an EPUB on uh, the iPad. iBooks can read the EPUB format. The Nooks, most devices. Uh, Kindle is really the odd, you know, device out because Kindle Kindle has this Mobi format, and um, it says it supports EPUB now. But really, it will just take your EPUB and try to try to translate it. So if you're if you're looking for interchangeability, EPUB is your is your best option. Does that, did that answer your question? Yeah. It wasn't a question, but um, on Kindle, there or, or on Amazon store, there is a section where you can put free Kindle books, and I've seen hmm. textbooks there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so thanks. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved. And you know, Jack will talk a little bit in just a second okay. about um, Kindle and some of the challenges that we've, we've come across. But I think, um, are there any more questions for Mike? Okay. I mean, we can ask afterwards. He's yeah. not going anywhere. So. Um, if you get if you get the if you get the Calibri thing, I mean, I think it's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, really, with Word, um, um, actually, my my wife is uh, putting together a, a, a text that's actually all it's, it's actually highly visual. It, it deals with art um, and how to draw different things. Um, and she did the whole thing in Word, and actually actually was able to get a really quality looking product. So I, so I say that this is not producing the best quality the best quality product, but on the other hand it's partially because I haven't put in the effort to do that. I think if you wanted to squeeze a, something that had, had a little more visual impact out of this, you, you probably could. You just mm -hmm. need to spend a little time.